From the Shooting from the Lip studio in Louisville, Kentucky, it's the KT Unearthly Show with your hosts, Kevin Hale and Tiffany Mack. What is up, everyone? Kevin Hale, live from the Shooting from the Lip studio in Louisville, Kentucky. It is the KT Unearthly Show on this Friday night, June 24th, 2016. This warm and humid Friday night with my warm and humid co-host, Tiffany Mack. <laughs> Tiffany, what's up? <laughs> I'm just trying to survive the heat. I am uh, really excited about this evening, though, and mm-hmm. um, just trying to uh, prepare myself mentally for a show that I've been really excited about. How are you doing? This is, I'm, I'm doing good. It's... Uh, it's a Friday night. It's been a long week. Um, I'm looking forward to tonight, too, because tonight, man, it has all of the food ingredients on getting a little deep with some of our uh, guilty pleasure topics, and that's mm-hmm. um, ufology, the whole um, yep. uh, UFO phenomenon, if you will. So um, here we are. Government and, uh, conspiracy. Exactly. You got military people and you got you know senators and you got the media and then you got us. physicists oh physicists. no and us yes yep and us yeah yep. as we yep. we shoot the shift in reality and take a walk on the paranormal side you've heard that line before haven't you amen yeah yes, preach I it have. yeah preach it yep uh, some, let me some quick show plugs. Social media you can subscribe to our show on iTunes and or YouTube. Shooting from the lip. Twitter at the shooting lip. Uh, my Twitter at Kevin Hale four two three. Tiffany is Tiffany Mac underscore E T. You can also like us, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Shooting from the lip. Tonight live via blog talk radio again on this friday night june 24 2016 tiffany on a personal note don't you um you're like eight hours t minus eight hours and counting before you uh no okay don't tell people okay. all right oh no all right. it's a secret it's a secret all right <laughs> it's it's all right and thus staying staying with the uh the format of the show um we're in Actually, the secrecy. That's right. It is a sworn secrecy. All right. Um, I'll uh, strike that, those last comments, and uh, let's move on. <laughs> uh, won't you go on and give a quick bi- uh, bio intro to our guest, and then when he comes on, we're going to have our little paranormal little uh, you know, take Segment. before we, we actually – Yeah, so go for it. Too. Awesome. Well, you know, I've I've spoken to Dan Willis a few times, and he is a super interesting um, character. I've I've actually um, known about him for quite a few years. Um, Dan is one of the Disclosure Project's top secret military witnesses that testified at the National Press Club in Washington D.C. in 2001, and it was in front of every major media. A world disclosure event, which was asking for congressional hearing in order to bring forth the witness scientists within the black projects who can release the technologies derived from extraterrestrial reverse engineering that they have been hidden for over 60 years and that could stop further damage to our planet. Instead, the message was sanitized by a controlled mainstream media. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, Dan is an ex-radio broadcast engineer and an ABC newsman. He has taken a keen interest in how the mainstream media was withheld, has withheld disclosure of the full message to the, to the public, a message based on the hundreds of credible military and intelligence witness testimonies. Um, what's, what's really cool about this is that I sit there and I think about um, a lot of things like X-Files and all of these other movies that have been brought forward um, through the popular culture. And it's it's amazing because it seems like most of them want to be 
very negative. They, they show a lot of negative entities. They show a lot of um, draining the body of bodily fluids and, and the, the drinking and eating of humanity. And um, it, it's always been sort of negative. So I, I think that a few people within this community – um, such as Dan Willis and a lot of the other uh, witnesses that came forward, which now include around 500 uh, witnesses. Um, and it should be a very interesting evening to hear some of the things that he has to say. So I'm very excited. Um, what what did you have to say? I think there was something brewing on the horizon today, wasn't there? Yes. Um, let's go on and bring in our guest dan willis dan welcome to the show man tiffany kevin hey it's a real pleasure to be on your show i I love uh you know people just don't ask questions enough (laughs) it's it's great to be able to it's great to be able to you know discuss all of this good good deal now getting started where tiffany was going just a nice little segue here today um was a uh, movie release, the premiere of Independence Day Resurgence, which is a sequel, if you will. It's the 20-year sequel Mm -hmm. to the original that was released in 1996, which when it came out, Will Smith um, was the star of the show, stole the show. Great movie. Um, What was your take... uh, Go, let's start with Dan. Let's light it up. Independence Day in 1996, which was five years before your um, 2001, you know, disclosure situation. Share with us your take on what Independence Day and some, you know, the way Hollywood kind of, you know, perceives the whole ufology thing. Because you, Independence Day was clearly – Military involvement, um, actually after the fact, because depending on you know the certain levels of the uh, government, they acknowledge the existence of. I guess at that time it was you know the Roswell thing. So you know, share with us your take on Independence Day and how Hollywood kind of uh, perceives the ufology thing. Kevin, one of my favorite subjects. Um, <laughs> You know, it's kind of interesting. On the movie poster, it says, you know, we had 20 years to prepare, and so did they, you know, which is kind of ridiculous because you have civilizations that are thousands or millions of years in advance of us, you know, know, 20 years to prepare, you know, against the uh, civilization thousands of years in advance. You know, it's kind of ludicrous. But, um, you know, all this was an outshoot of what's called Project Dove, which... uh, (laughs) You know, this this whole, uh, if you look back through history and you look how the Nazis uh, essentially infiltrated into our national security apparatus, and uh, they had a plan, uh, it was called uh, Velkenschallenskrieg, which meant worldview warfare. In other words, they planned to, you know, we... But, you know, we had ticker tape parades and victory over Germany and all this stuff, but all the Nazis escaped, and they effectively <laughs> infiltrated in. They all escaped, and, uh, I like that. Yeah, Ridiculous. they did. Thousands of them, and uh, <laughs> hundreds of the U-boats, you know, going down to Antarctica and uh, South America, and, you know, there's just so much evidence that, uh, you know, Hitler and Heinrich Himmler mm-hmm. both escaped, you know. Uh, the thing is, this plan that uh, they planned to get in and see the Nazis' idea was more uh, fighting in a qualitative rather than quantitative. You know, instead of you know dealing with all this, the manufacturing might of the United States, you know, to build all these tanks and planes and troops and all these things, they decided to work smart instead of hard, and instead they infiltrated into our system. They had their people in place. They uh, had a deal. They cut with uh, Alan Dulles back when he was uh, working with OSS and then eventually came into the CIA where they brought in, you know, thousands of Nazi uh, intelligence people. And then his paperclip became in the NASA and so forth and so on. So 
part of this plan was uh, in 19, you know, the war ended in 1945, and then in 1946, their fascist collaborators, I guess you could call it, the Rockefellers, rewrote the history books of what the children read today, of what actually happened at the end of World War II. And so they, they controlled education. They controlled the mainstream media in 1950 with Operation Mockingbird, which even today we have uh, journalists coming out and saying that they, they uh, kind of sp- build their cover, and so there are non-official covers where the CIA gives them the information, but it's represented as being independent sources, and we still have those relationships expanded even to a higher degree today. And then in 1951, they started um, Project Dove, which was the first movie they put out, which was fairly positive, was, you know, the day there stood still. Um, But then, as time went on, more and more you can see all the movies where there is a fear associated with extraterrestrials. Every which way you can imagine some way of evil aliens coming in to kill us all and take over our planet has been Hollywood's uh, venue for some time. So, you know, the first Independence Day, the message was, you know, I want you to die, you know. Mm-hmm. And then if you look back at some of the leaked documents back during, um, I think it's 19, uh, don't quote me exactly, I think it was around 1967 or so, a uh, report from Iron Mountain came out where LBJ hit the roof, had it suppressed for all time. And in there, they talked about contriving a threat from outer space in order to uh, keep expanding the industrial military complex. And then in 1977, when uh, Werner von Braun died on his deathbed, he, he talked about the plans of the, the future plans where we're going to have to fight terrorists. And then the final, uh, the final card, as he called it, that we would have to do is an extraterrestrial threat, but it's all a lie. Um, and so we look at all the programming going into the billions of minds that watch all of Hollywood movies uh, into our subconscious minds that associate fear with the extraterrestrials. But hey, guess what? We're still doing this show. and <laughs> so We're alive. So, uh, you know, if they were going to attack, they'd do it before we had nuclear weapons, you know, in 45. So, uh, but anyway, that's my... Uh, that's my, my take on Independence Day. It's another uh, psychological operation in order to acquaint this uh, military gung-ho um, recruiting of, oh, yes, Earth forces are all going to join together, like Ronald Reagan and uh, Bill Clinton right. said on Jimmy Kimmel Live, where we all have to get together and make nice. Let's just hope it's not like Independence Day, you know, they say. <laughs> Well, you know, Hollywood is actually um, very well known for overstating or exaggerating. Go figure. (laughs) Kevin? Oh, yes. Uh, I thought that was (laughs) – can you hear me? I can now. Okay. Um, Yeah, and and I have to throw in one of my – two cents on one of my – actually my favorite show of all time, The X-Files, which is, you know, was Mulder and his fixation with uh, finding his sister who was taken by aliens. My my and struggle? I, I, what's that? Yeah, my, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and, um, um, but I have to uh, sync the two uh, shows, actually. In 96, when um, Independence Day came out, uh, you know, X Files was about three years into the, you know the series, and it was really starting to pick up some steam. And there was the, if, if you remember, Dan, there was the infamous line um, in, on in Independence Day where uh, I forgot the character's name, but he's on the phone and he says, uh, "Yes, ma'am, I love the X Files too. I hope you get to see it too because you know the the the." the um the uh what is it the satellites were being you know are were being blocked and stuff and then um 
And then when the X Files movie came out in '98, there was the infamous shot where Mulder had to he went out back like in the alley of a bar to relieve himself, and you you see the picture of him. You know, you can see, you can hear him pissing like on the wall, and then it cuts to a poster of the in, of the Independence Day. It's like as if he's pissing on the poster, and the creator of the X Files acknowledged that he had like no care for for that movie, anyways. But they, I, oh. throw that in. So, yeah. I was wondering where that was going, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and there's there's the uh, climactic moment of that story. So. Let's. It's tonight. It's it's about Dan Willis. Dan, you're under a different type of interrogation. You know, our friendly. <laughs> but share with us. I, mean, you, I love you, it. You were, yeah, you were also U.S. Navy, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was in. Uh, I, you know, did a tour in combat action in Vietnam, and I was about over two years at the Naval Communication Station in San Francisco in 1969. I was uh, I was a certified high speed code operator and, and teletype and everything. And so uh, sometimes the uh, propagation doesn't allow the signals to come in. And so you know you have that primitive communication. And there was this one ship off the coast of Alaska that the crew witnessed coming off Port Bow, a brightly glowing, about 70 foot diameter, reddish orange glowing saucer essentially came out of the ocean turning from a USO unidentified mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. submerged object into a UFO shooting radar operator tracked the BRIPS estimated about 7,000 miles per hour this uh, was a secret classified uh, priority message going to Chief of Naval Operations Washington DC and then like the other witnesses that all had supporting documentation I contacted Office of Naval Intelligence to try to get a copy of that report but they said it's been destroyed but there's so many other witnesses that have so much documentation and backup for what they say so Unfortunately, all I have is my word on that one. But, you know, as I, as I go through life, I start to find out, oh, that was kind of weird. I never heard anything like that. And then all of a sudden I find out that's really common. The Soviet intelligence, are more than half of the UFO sightings coming in or going out of this earth are coming in and out of our oceans. Hmm. Right. And, um, and a number of it, it, people have written books on that. Yeah, I actually which, have an experience of one of those. Oh, yeah. You want to hear it? Did you, it's did a you short post one. a picture of that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a I have a house down in Dustin, Florida. And uh, there was, I sit out there, I've been watching the stars forever. So I sit outside on my lanai and I'm watching the stars over the ocean. And this, this, beast of a light comes straight down from the sky does not have any kind of there was there was no angle to it other than 90 degree angle it came straight down went under the water i could see it under the water and then it vanished i'm sorry tiffany where was this again destin florida it's near um eglin air force base if that gives you any idea so yeah that was my first like really big, oh my gosh, that was strange. That was my first like really big one. But um, it, you know, the the United States government has been covering up the existence of UFOs and alien beings for, I mean, over sixty years. While at the same time, using these ultra secret military and intelligence teams to investigate, intimidate, harass, um, track, and even abduct abductees. So. Although there are striking differences between the experiences of abductees and the mind control victims, there are similarities as well. But with alien abduction are not just American phenomena. They occur occur worldwide. So I'm thinking that even there's there's got to be a knowledge, a basic knowledge from our governments, not just ours, but the ones all over the earth, you know, the maybe starting with the Nazis. Do you think that that might have been the first, like, modern-day contact? Well, 
you know, there's some things I, I can speak from experience, other things you can speak from speculation is the best you can do. But, you know, it does seem that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Nazis developed uh, anti-gravity, you mm-hmm. know, back in, uh, uh, you know, they started in the 20s and developed in the 40s. And then um, there's some, some believe that the Nazis, uh, you know, take... Um, um, George Adamski, for example, uh, you know, uh, the, the photo he took of the Venetian scout ship is identical, absolutely identical to the, the Reich saucers, you know, that they were using right. the uh, spinning uh, mercury engines on. And then, you know, I was involved with uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel uh, working in a, a parapsychology laboratory, Psychic Research Incorporated, for many years. Um, after I worked for Naval Electronic Engineering Center uh, for about 13 years, we uh, received samples from Billy Meyer from the Palladians that we had set up a laboratory with electron microscopes and all kinds of advanced, sophisticated stuff. We were studying consciousness interface with uh, the substance of quartz and water. And uh, we, we analyzed the, the samples, and they were nothing that that could be related to that this uh, cold fusion process that we didn't know how to do at that time. Um, but, you know, there's even belief that uh, some of the Palladian contacts were maybe, uh, who knows, Maria Orsic or something of the Viral Society, you know. So, you know, with these, these, these beings with German accents and things. So the one thing they wanted to do, like Alan Dulles would go around and would tell scientists to back off that we're trying to discredit George Adamski. Mm-hmm. Um, because according to, you know, William Casey, the CIA director for Reagan, you know, he, they basically uh, revealed to Reagan that they were, were seeing how easily the people can be fooled. You know, and I think it's a, there's a lot of psychological operations going on to test the water you know, like Kevin, you brought up about 9-11, you know, like, uh, my God, there's so many holes through that one. Uh, but, hey, uh, you have control of the mainstream media. You can sell just about anything, right? That's true. Well, it, yeah. it turned out to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I want to let's I, actually I'm kind of liking where we're going instead of us jumping right into 2001 with you, Dan. I, I like the fact that we're kind of reminiscing with the past. We've talked, you know, the Nazi regime and how uh, potentially they there there is the story that they they got a hold of a, a uh, of a crashed uh, UFO, did the reverse engineering, and a lot of things came out, you know, from Germany during the war. Foo Fighters and all this stuff here. It, take us be, like right then. Is it? I mean, what would the uh, media perception or the the world perception? What did it have been like? Whoa, whoa, whoa! How in the hell did you all just do what you did? Where did? How did you get that information or that technology? I mean, is it like? Some of the stuff that just kind of happened, you know, from, you know, the 30s with Germany and maybe some of the fallout or aftermath of Roswell and technology and how it just kind of took. You mean how how the technology just like multiplied by gargantuan amounts? Right. I mean, I I mean, that alone, isn't that kind of like us, you know, acknowledging. Red flag. Yeah, exactly. So, well, it it evolved. You know, uh, the Nazis had like about a four decade jump on, uh, on mm-hmm. the United States. Uh, you know, uh, in the nineteen around nineteen twenty two. You know, the uh, the German occultists were uh, doing uh, the girls of the Viral, you know, the ones with the long hair, that believe their hair uh, acted like a cosmic antenna, which actually they did. Uh, the government 
paid for a, a test in Vietnam and found it's out the Native that, yeah, Americans, right? Yeah, the Native Americans, yes. they, yeah, they pick it up mm. if their hair is yep. long. They don't if they don't, you know, so. Yeah, it was oh, like yeah. They, they wouldn't be ambushed if they had long hair and they were able to be snuck up upon if they cut it. So they were receiving communication from uh, this Alberian uh, constellation that was in an ancient Sumerian script. And uh, then they shared it with Dr. Schumann, uh, the one who is responsible for the Schumann resonance on the uh, discovering that on the how the Earth and the ionosphere creates this resonant cavity, which I, I did work with Dr. Robert Beck many years over on you know, mind entrainment and things like that. Uh, uh, he found it was viable viable physics in this whole thing. And then there was a, what you mentioned, there was a crash in 1936 in the Black Forest in Germany, mm-hmm. which they pulled information from. So, you know, the, the Viral Society was basically benevolent. They wanted to see a positive thing. But, you know, at the time, then Himmler's SS division was wanting to pull them in. And, uh, so apparently they had two secret space programs going on. Uh, you know, according to, I'm just catching up on some of these secret space program whistleblowers, which I'm still kind of putting on the shelf and waiting to see more information because none of these people have, you know, documentation except for William Tompkins, who was working with the Navy, who was working with the Nordics, and they had, you know, what, 29 spies that were embedded into uh, the Nazi industrial military complex, making, you know, the disks and things. So what, um, what happened was, uh, yeah, the Nazis just uh, leaps and bounds. They uh, got, got way ahead. And many decades later, um, the corporations that, you know, Colonel Corso talks about that we got, you know, lasers, night vision, fiber optics, you know, all these things derived from reverse engineering uh, were given mm-hmm. out to, you know, the smartest people are in the military. They're in the, some of these corporations. So they, uh, the corporations, of course, are owned by some of the elite, <laughs> you know, some of the wealthiest people in the world. Uh, and so they started their own uh, according to some of the secret space program whistleblowers, uh, a, a huge corporate conglomerate that uh, is still operating uh, outside the planet. But I don't have any direct knowledge of that. That's just stuff I'm uh, just catching up on. But, you know, some of it ties together very perfectly with uh, the whole history of how we are and and everything that has happened since the end of World War II to present day, um, it, you know, it just sort of connects the dots together pretty well. But, you know, I'm still waiting to see more information on that area. Right. Now, I want to throw this at you. Roswell, the infamous crash, July 1947, you know, when our um, very... Uh, intelligent um, army, right? Uh, who I would think were trained people who could tell, you know, a balloon from a craft, the difference, you know, how they acknowledged a craft, a, a, a saucer, one day and then retracted it with the balloon the next day. Or, yeah. But regardless of the stories, it's, you know, the consensus is that there was a quote-unquote crash. Now, my take has always been, I have to ask this question, is that, and this is just going to sound like the, um, the devil's advocate here, but, you know, if Dan, and I'm, I'm going to stay with Roswell for a little bit here, but with, with using this, with a crash, how is it that supposedly – the mindset is that UFOs are coming from outside of this planet. So they're, they're traveling however – you know, the distance they're traveling with this technology. How is it that they get here, but then they crash? I mean, it's like uh, you, you know, you're, you do, you're going all this way, and all of a sudden, whoa – you know, I would have thought technology would have prevented something like it. Help me understand that part. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good question, Kevin. Uh, according to the FBI um, uh, documents that come out, that it's believed that the saucers were crashed, you know, in the Roswell situation, what they had was over by White Sands. They, they started, you know, with all the activity they were doing, there were lots of UFOs, you know, especially after the explosion of the uh, nuclear weapons and, uh, or atomic bomb in 1945, um, which escalated, you know, with the number of UFO sightings. And they were flying all over the place. White Sands was a hotbed for all that stuff. Werner von Braun was there and so forth. In fact, an uh, ex-Navy captain I worked with on satellite equipment, he, he was working there. He said, you know, World War II, three <laughs> happened a couple of times, but it got shut down. In other words, the, the UFOs had come in and shut them down. Um, what, uh, uh, what they were doing is they set up some form of high-powered radar. Remember the, you know, what's, what's interesting, you know, all the science fiction movies that we've seen, you know, since we were a little kid, you know, and I... I've seen a lot since I was, you know, <laughs> in the early 50s, you know, seeing all the science fiction movies like the yeah. Earth versus the Flying Saucers, right? And they had how the saucers going over and then the trucks would come on with this radar kind of thing and they'd point it at it and the saucers would go, woo, 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 and crash, right? Well, <laughs> they uh, apparently set up some kind of high power radar and the electromagnetic pulse because these craft... They operate um, uh, symbionically with the operators. So it's a consciousness interface that uh, pilots the craft. And, you know, if you, you hit a large electromagnetic pulse, uh, everything works, uh, you could say, in a form of, of electrical and electronics. Um, it could have, uh, you know... It could have been what was, according to the documents, that's what they say, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my take, is that they do the, the agreement with, well, with, the, with the you know, weather balloon theory. Now, a weather balloon, help me understand this, Dan, is, is what it is. It's a balloon, correct? I mean, it's a balloon that's... Um, whatever size and it's up in the air and it's getting all this information. But when a balloon comes down, it's a balloon just kind of really is really from, it's a vertical descent. Really? I mean, it's not, you know, there's no angle where explosion it's when, hit, it, when it hits yeah, the earth. Right. <laughs> it, yeah. And travels and skids for like, you know, yards or, you know, whatever. So that part, I was like, you know, help me understand. I mean, how can you say it's a balloon when, to me, a balloon would not leave skid marks, if you will? It's, so. <laughs> yeah, it's it's ludicrous, Kevin. You know, and it's almost as though the Air Force is like saying, yes, it happened, but we can't really officially say that. You know, they came out r later with uh, Project Mongol and said, oh, well, that, this describes the bodies, you know, the little four-foot bodies or three-foot bodies, uh, you know, and they didn't even have dummies at that time. So they, they give one lame explanation after another, you know, when um, they, uh, what was his name, uh, General Ramsey in Texas, you know, had, uh, right. had, had him, uh, you know, holding... Uh, uh, Jesse Marcel holding this weather balloon with a with a look on his face like okay I'm going along with this <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and and then he's holding a he's holding a memorandum in his hand but you know the thing is yeah. even in the 1940s there was good photography that mm -hmm. you could read the victims of the crash <laughs> of the disc you know something like that you know you don't have victims in a weather balloon. Well, I don't know if you've read this or not or heard about him, but um, Charles James Hall wrote uh, Millennial Hospitality and things like this. So um, I do remember uh, reading about the weather balloons um, that he let off, which was part of his job. So, I mean, the, the way he described the weather balloons is that they were like this little bitty thin metallic type uh, paper, you know, not paper, but you know what I'm saying, like a thin material it goes up and it sometimes bursts or it sometimes goes off the radar, you know, it goes off range, but it's, it's not a craft. It is like 
a it's a balloon. There's a total difference. It's not like, I mean, it goes up with the wind. It goes up with you know the air. It doesn't have its own controls and 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 have a path and this and that other than the wind. Yeah, you know, you know what what what's sad and criminal about this whole thing is that, uh, you know, our entire planet's been hijacked technologically. You know, after when we had. We have, sci- you know, there's 500 witnesses, including admirals, generals, astronauts. You know, we have the scientists, uh, you know, some of the testimonies that were effectively sanitized, you know, uh, you know, talking about, you know, having a solution to get off oil, nuclear and coal for over 70 years. Presidents, CIA directors being denied access, 57 different species. My friend Clifford Stone was on retrieval cases face to face with the ETs. Um, you know, NASA airbrushing the UFOs out before releasing to the public, Donna Hare, uh, Carl Wolf, uh, seeing visually clearly a base on the other side of the moon, you know, domes, mushroom, mushroom shaped buildings and stuff like this. And, and, you know, and the Nazis had a base, uh, they developed in about 19, uh, they landed on the moon back in 1942, you know, so all the stuff that we have at NASA with the rockets and stuff, we're needing to drive our cars with gasoline. We're needing these dangerous leaking nuclear power plants. Uh, no, uh, they've had the technology, but, and I can speak from firsthand experience with this, uh, because after, Let's say after, you know, we, were, we had 22 cameras in the back row, all the major media, each one of us stated after our testimony that we're willing to testify under oath. That's a penalty of perjury and, you know, break national security oaths because the operations can't cite the rule of law because they're illegal outside of our constitutional government. And so um, after the press club, you know, CBS came down, did a special interview with me. And I said, look, I'm not doing this interview unless I can say we have the scientists when these black projects that can end the energy environmental crisis that's been hidden all these years. And they promised up and down. She was new at this, right? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) She was almost in tears. I know I promised, uh, but uh, the higher executives, you know, read CIA made me cut that part out. You know, how would a major news service like CBS cut out an announcement that a solution to the energy and environmental crisis on the planet is, is available? So, mm-hmm. you know, the, there's a definite, uh, at the highest levels, you know, the CIA controls the mainstream media. And so afterward, you know, since we couldn't bring the scientists of the black projects, uh, Dr. Greer set up a corporation. We had about a database of about 300 scientists and inventors around the world. I uh, flew around the planet. Uh, I spent about 10 years of my life meeting with scientists because I have a good science background, you know, working with the Navy with electronic engineering for many years uh, and out-of-the-box technologies. So, you know, one example, there was this one down in the Dominican Republic. I flew down with a professor. He had an energy device mm. producing about 500 watts of power. Um, mm. When we flew back down there, uh, he disassembled the whole thing, and he said um, two guys from the CIA were there the day before and left right when we arrived, and I said to him, you know, this works, you're dead. Uh, we had a team of, of scientists and inventors. Some of the scientists were, were murdered. Some of the inventors, this one Dutch scientist, uh, had a little shoebox that was producing about 240 watts based on the principle. And he had an incredible mind. You know, he wrote advanced calculus on the dynamics of electron flow, and he had multiple volume books. I mean, it was like way over my head, the mathematics. And he was able to, uh, Rebecca and I, we flew to Virginia, and we set up a lab near uh, Thomas Jefferson's place in Monticello, and we met with different scientists and um, proving what they were doing. So I can tell you... Many of the scientists, some had SWAT teams come in, clean their laboratories out that had, uh, one had a crystal that was able to generate all this power, and they cleaned out his lab. Uh, Most of the scientists that I met with have received national security orders, which state that uh, 
your invention has been deemed a detriment to the national security of the United States, and anyone you've shared this with, you must uh, disclose, and you cannot share this with anyone. Um, guess what? Over five to 6,000 of these have been issued through the U.S. Patent Office under a secret program called the Sensitive Application Warning System, which is basically the national security apparatus interfacing in and saying that anything that can be a solution for nuclear oil or coal, anti-gravity, or room temperature superconductivity, you know, um, even solar cells that are over 28% efficient, you know, um, they get slapped one of these national. So for all these years, we've been um, uh, uh, purposely retarded technologically. And so we <laughs> still think we need the gasoline and we need nuclear power plants and coal for, I mean, we've got these dangerous obsolete technologies while they have this, uh, what some call breakaway civilization with, you know, advanced anti-gravity. They don't need gasoline. I assure you. And uh, even in the sciences of medical sciences, um, you know, across the board, uh, while the rest of the surface dwellers on this planet are kept in this um, matrix of perception, which is what the Vulcan Schallenskrieg uh, plan was, to keep everybody believing in a certain way. It's like the movie The Matrix, you know, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> except that. Except there's a lot of glitches in this matrix, and the glitches are the you know the whistleblowers, the the leaked, authenticated uh, you know classified documents that come out, because you know it's hard to fake 500 witnesses, especially with people there's no monetary gain and uh, exactly. have you know your yeah. credibility discredited and so forth. Exactly. Uh, you are listening to the KT Unearthly Show on Paranormal Segment with Shooting from the Lip. Uh, we are host Tiffany Mack and Kevin Hale with our guest uh, Dan Willis, and we're discussing the um, who who actually controls the agreed upon reality through the mainstream media and why they're so scared of disclosing the truth about the ET reality. Um, Dan, mm. you actually just said something that sort of piqued my interest, and it was. For all of us surface dwellers out there, and one of the aspects of um, a lot of these, well, let's start with let's start with the pop culture and the movies, and let's talk about these um, these creatures from inner Earth or these reptilians that may be underground or 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 underground bases that are you know scattered throughout the world what do you feel do you do you think there is some water behind all this this talk oh absolutely yeah the underground bases is a fact um <laughs> you know uh there's much evidence to that um as far as um you know, the reptilians, and I've never met a reptilian, so, you know, I don't like to speak from anything I haven't had some direct <laughs> experience with, you know. Uh, I we, have we, won't hold you. we won't hold you to all this. <laughs> <laughs> but I have had some ET encounters, the ET interactions. I've had missing time. I've had uh, had them fly 100 feet over my head uh, in Arizona with my brother. I've had, uh, I had them contact me and I reached my hand out in the middle of the night in the mountains where I was with camping with a girlfriend and uh, said, is somebody out there? You know, like that, because it was like, I had this, this, you know, somebody's somebody's looking at you or somebody's, you could feel somebody, you know what I'm saying? Um, I reached my hand out and the ship came down and was bobbing up and down, scintillating different colors. Uh, Jaime Musan, after I uh, had lunch with him in Washington, uh, invited me to Mexico, and I went down there with a friend who spoke much better Spanish than I do. Um, and it was about 7,000 people, and he was, he was doing this uh, thing showing the Swedish scientists and the UFO going into the volcano and shutting it down. And I was on Telemundo television saying, look, we have the technologies and, and the pollution in Mexico City. That's, you know, all this stuff. Anyway, afterward, uh, we were going back across the border this is you know in tijuana 
And uh, I was living in San Diego, and so I was got on my little Porsche, and we took the top off. It was a summer night. It was nice. And so uh, we left the border. We checked the clock, on the, and it was like midnight. I took him home. Most would take like 30 minutes, and four hours were missing for both of us. That so just totally don't know what happened. Um, I also had... Uh, an ET, uh, a number of ET experiences. One was kind of profound that had to do with consciousness and geometry that led me on a quest to research uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel up in San Jose and work with him in the laboratory that was trying to piece together what uh, what this experience was, what it, what it meant to as far as understanding this matrix that, that we're in. Um, Anyway, it gets into a long show in itself, but um, so you know, I don't know. But uh, according to William Tompkins, the Nordics, who you know uh, Eisenhower met with, you know, in 1954, uh, who they wanted to give us all this wonderful technology, but they didn't want to do uh, releasing all their nuclear weapons, and so you know, later the uh, Greys. Uh, supposedly working with the reptilians, uh, cut a deal in Holloman Air Force Base with them since uh, the generals didn't like releasing nuclear weapons, but the Greys were made, they cut a deal. Um, and then, uh, you know, according to the secret space program whistleblowers, is that uh, when they built the bases down in Antarctica, there was uh, reptilians down there, and uh, mm-hmm. they kind of uh, got a little... Uh, boost as well, you know, with technology. So I don't know. I don't have any. <laughs> this is just uh, what the, the uh, whistleblowers are saying. But, you know, uh, William Tompkins is pretty substantially documented, uh, even with witnesses that, you know, saw him where he worked and uh, McDonnell Douglas and so forth, and that he was working with the Navy, uh, with the Navy spies embedded into the uh the Nazi uh, complex that we're trying to reproduce. We're trying to catch up. Um, <laughs> the Nazis were way ahead. Uh, in fact, you know, some believe that you know the 1952 flyover Washington D.C. was sort of an intimidation to get Truman and Eisenhower kind of on board, and they already had all their people in place. You know, they had so much money. You know, when the Nazis. Uh, uh, 1944 Operation Eagle Flight. All the gold and, and things they had, they were able to buy 750 front corporations and set up all through Argentina. And, and you know, you wonder how many of those corporations are just household names that we just take for granted uh, today. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> it's really sort of scary to think about that, actually. So what do you think about um, the technologies that have been denied us based on on the facts that that you have witnessed? Well, you know, it's clean. It's non-polluting. It pulls from, uh, you know, zero point or the the vacuum of space. Um, You know, Tesla was able to uh, accomplish that back when uh, most of his uh, inventions were based on radiant energy. Uh, we worked with John Bedini for many years, and uh, we're supposedly I was going to deliver a energy device uh, with my friend and my other partner in Hong Kong to the Prime Minister of China. We had a whole meeting set up, uh, but uh, our Hong Kong partner got greedy, and, uh, and then Bedini was never able to produce, so what I ran into so many times with inventors is there's a lot of people out there that are delusional <laughs> uh, that think they've got something figured out. And then there's some very brilliant people who uh, do have it figured out, but they're the ones that get the national security orders, it seems like. Um, <laughs> and there's just plain liars. <laughs> so know, when, you say, when you say so. they have the national security orders – and you're saying that they're told to shut it, put it down, and act like it didn't happen, right? Exactly. They go to prison if they release their solution to help the world get off of whatever 
obsolete technologies we have. And, you know, to me, that's an infiltration through the national security apparatus that happened back in, uh, back at the end of World War II, you know. Well, that sort of sounds to me like um, if you have a really great idea and you want it to get out, you're probably screwed. But then again, you might want to get involved with the military <laughs> because that's probably the only way that they won't silence you, even though you'll be silenced anyway. But the Navy, you can the still, Navy, you can yeah. still develop <laughs> <laughs> the Navy or the Marines. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, my father was a was a career marine. I was I was raised on a military uh, marine air station in uh, in Cherry Point on the East Coast over there. And my father was in World War II and the Korean War and got presidential citation. My brother was in the Air Force, and you know I we were all military family. Uh, so yeah, I you know we have a lot of good guys that. Thank God, you know, in the CIA and the NSA and Marines and Navy and the other forces as well, um, that you know, I kind of send my my thanks and blessings to you know that are out there doing what they can in an infiltrated system. Mm. They, um, you know, I just I'm Dan. I'm looking at. It's funny you asked before the show. You're like. How, how long are we doing this show? Uh, one or two hours? And I, I think I jokingly said yes and maybe. Definitely yes for an hour, maybe two hours. I stand corrected. It's I think we're yes and yes. We're almost at the at the 60-minute uh, mark, and I think we've probably got another 60 minutes of chat to uh, to pull off tonight. So, uh, so far, so good. <laughs> Thanks for – you know, and you know what? We're – chronologically we're still we're still not at 2001 yet and i'm going to hold true to that because i've got two more dates that i have to throw at you in 199 mm-hmm. or excuse me 1980 rendlesham forest where military who now military pe- personnel from that uh incident in 1980 have blasted you know, ufology shows. Uh, actually, they were at that what 2013 Senate hearing as well. Who citizen hearing? Open, uh-huh. Yeah. Who openly? I mean, these are trained military people who describe to a T what they see, what they saw. Um, the there was a um, one of the c- colonels has an audio, a recording. Uh, of the of the whole ordeal, how he's describing it, you know, we're not, they're not they were not just it wasn't a lighthouse. I'm convinced it wasn't a lighthouse. How again? <laughs> when you got, I mean, is it is that a like? Um, obviously, to me, it's a slap in the face of the of the trained yeah. military personnel who have to, you know, um, who, con- who I guess in a sense have to contradict what. Our government, or or our leaders say, and you know, and it it is kind of it's a slap in the face to their credibility too, because you know these guys, you know, why again pointing out why would these people, you know, be saying these things and want to potentially discredit themselves, you know, in their lives or their families, and I mean I don't get that, but share with us what you know of Rendlesham because that's that was a big deal. So my friend Larry Warren, who um, was one of the witnesses that uh, joined us in 2001 to disclose that situation, uh, well, yeah, they hit him up against his head with a gun butt and uh, said, yeah, you better sign these papers. You don't want to disclose this this lighthouse to anybody. Um, (laughs) I'm just kidding with you. Uh, You know, it's it's kind of ridiculous because when we were in uh, Washington, uh, he was on the phone, uh, you know, after we did the National Press Club. Everybody's on the ca- on the phones, right, in the Hilton. And uh, he's saying, hey, Dan, they're picketing out in front of Parliament. They're holding up picketing signs saying, expose the secret government, release the extraterrestrial technologies. I mean, can you believe it? We actually got a physical response from that day over in the U.K. Nothing was happening over in Washington. Why? Because... The mainstream media so effectively sanitized that out. How do you how do you 
block out all that information. What they the, they said, oh, is there life on other planets? Some people think they have proof there is. Elaine Tihana explains, you know, and it goes on to this whole thing, and they cut out everything that Dr. Greer was saying in the beginning. Only one part where it says, oh, these objects of extraterrestrial origin have been tracked on radar going thousands of miles stopping and making right-hand turns and then cut. I have the audio clips and all this stuff. Uh, I should play it next time we do a show. It says, and we have already reverse engineered the technologies and know how to do it and so forth and so on. And it's a danger of the national security. All this, of course, is cut out. So basically the sanitized version coming off CNN, you know, the average guy sitting back drinking a beer, eating potato chips, watching the evening news. Um, you know, hey, they're going to think, hey, that's good. They're going to have a hearing on uh, UFOs, well, you know, it's probably not that important. This was before 9-11, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, that was nice of Dr. Greer to collect all those witnesses, you know, have a hearing on the reality of UFOs, you know. Well, they don't have the money to spend for that type of thing, you know. So that's the impression, I think, a lot of, uh, you know, the mainstream uh, listeners get when they watch CNN and the mainstream you know, different networks. And in fact, you know, afterward, I don't mean to go off subject, I'll get back to Reynoldson, but, you know, afterward, we I toured the, all over the United States in the major cities. And we had like rent big halls, like Masonic halls, and we had all the TV cameras from, the, you know, I was in Colorado, San Diego, LA, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, you know, all, all over the place. We hit all the major cities. And without exception, even though we, we did a, reduced executive briefing video that was boiled down from four hours. The very first copy, I happened to have been friends with the president of Lockheed International, and I sat down with him hoping that he might join in with all the CIA connections, but no, no, no cigar. Um, and so anyway, we, uh, we, we took a one hour executive and we'd have standing ovations but without exception, um, San Diego had smoke with dancing alien dolls. In San Francisco, we were heard, you know, um, they were told to make fun of it. And so what they did was they came out and said, oh, the Disclosure Project's looking to aliens to solve the world's energy problems. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in and, and Portland, you know, um, mm-hmm. UFOs and free energy. Come on, let's go on to the big story. This week, the bozos meet the boncos in the playoffs and, you know, so forth and so on. Anyway, it was like incredibly uh, consistent, the giggle factor, mm-hmm. every single network affiliate in the different uh, major cities. But uh, back to Rendleson Forest, uh, we weren't supposed to have any nukes over there in the U.K., uh, uh-huh. And what they did was they uh, shined a beam down, and they reprogrammed them. You know, just like uh, uh, my friend uh, Robert Salas, nuclear launch officer, uh, who joined us in 2001 uh, with all his official documentation and everything. Uh, he said, you know, they could have destroyed us. All they did was send a beam down, and he said he felt like a... Um, it felt like a parental type of thing, like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> naughty weapons, you know, don't use those things. Uh, but they just showed that they could shut them down. And all they did was send a beam in. And, you know, it's, it's ridiculous because uh, one of the witnesses, uh, what was his name, uh, Professor Jacobs, that was working in Vandenberg, and they shot, they were going to explode a nuclear head on the moon. Uh, Mm -hmm. interesting. And, uh, they had a telephoto, uh, he was in charge of the photography of this thing, watching the, it's going about 16,000 miles per hour, 17,000, something like that. And then the warhead's going up and UFO comes in, circles it with a plasma beam going boop, 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 boop. And then it goes off from the direction it comes in and nuclear head, you know, falls off to earth, dismantled. Um, and the CIA comes in and says, uh, now, you know, your, uh, oath of national security, you won't say anything. Dr. Jacobs cuts that part out. Just like, uh, you know, one of the astronauts, Gordon Cooper back in, um, uh, I think it was Edwards air force base where they actually filmed one of the saucers coming down CIA crew. And this is an American astronaut saying this, that, uh, the CIA came in and confiscated it. So the CIA 
which I believe has been heavily infiltrated, <laughs> according to all the indicators, uh, has kept the lid on this pretty well. Do you, you know, what's funny is that we're we're trying to be, you know, we actually have a topic, or you know, our discussion tonight is of a serious nature. It really is. But the more we talk about it, the more we, we can't help but start to laugh at the fact that how can there be so much evidence, you know, in, you know, staring at us? And, I mean, it is laughable to, to hear um, people at several levels of government, authority, whatever, try to make a case or – you know, say you know, we we see we see it as black, but they're coming back. No, you're 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 not. It's white. I mean, that it's so laugh. I mean, I'm 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 so dumbfounded. But anyways, I guess that's why we're doing a podcast tonight, Tiffany, because uh, we like to talk about this kind of stuff, and um, you know, well, we, we like neutralize to have... those in the in the face lies, don't we? Well, exactly. the thing is that it's always yeah, it's it's. It's always the the fight for information, but you have to surf and swim through the disinformation to get to it. And that's the hard part. Even for me, I I experience things of my own, but when it comes down to others' experiences, you have to sit back and have a speculative eye and um, a skeptical eye. And you have to decide for yourself in the end whether it it feels true, whether it feels legitimate. And, you know, you almost have to listen to your inner self. I mean, don't you agree, Dan? Oh, my God. Yeah, we're under a huge disinformation thing. You know, look at the CIA is tied in, uh, you know, controlling the mainstream media with the Council of Foreign Relations and the Tavistock Institute with billions of dollars going into all these think tanks, engineering our consent, you know, through the mainstream media. And then you have, uh, you know, you have all this leaked information like Snowden, they all leaked all the information on GCHQ. Of, I mean, if you look at all the stuff that the NSA, there isn't anything, there isn't a backdoor they don't have. Even when your phone's turned off, they they can track you and listen to you, you know, right. so they got just about every exploit possible. And then all of this is going up to uh, Bluffdale up there to that huge uh, processing center with Yoda bytes. In other words, uh, centuries of uh, an entire world's communication using quantum computers with artificial intelligence can, can totally understand and interpret. I know it's, it's mind boggling to even imagine, but they can interpret the entire world's communications based on what we're saying, uh, such as this conversation right now and, uh, and your texts and your emails and, and, you know, like William Binney, who was the code breaker. He was like top code breaker in NSA. He quit in disgust after Bush did the warrantless wiretapping in 2001. And he says, they're not doing anything for terrorists. They're, they're making dossiers on everybody. Yeah, every person in the States, every person in the country, every person in the world with, any, with any voice. And that information can be used against you, you know? Uh, so uh, the thing is, is that the psychological operations that are going on <clears throat> through the see Brzezinski had this fear of uh, the one that started the trilateral commission with David Rockefeller uh, that there's this global awakening and there is a global awakening due to the alternative media of the internet thanks to guys like you uh, that's happening and you can see it everywhere there is uh, you, I know you guys do a lot on uh, consciousness and paranormal mm -hmm. well there's definitely a collective consciousness that all of us are tied into that we're picking it up, even if we're not tuned into the alternative media. I believe people are picking up the um, uh, picking up the flavor. You know, I mean, I'll I'll talk to like some truck driver or or construction worker, that, you know, totally unrelated with this, and he'll, he'll start talking like, "Wow, he's clued in," you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's like uh, places you'd least least expect it, but you know, they've got armies of trolls sock puppets and shills, you know, that the NSA and 
CIA is working together in order to help um, perception management. Perception management's big. We spend billions of four, over four billion dollars a year on, uh, and it's legal through the NDAA, you know, the National Defense Authorization Act, Obama signed in to use disinformation against the American people. So we pay the taxes that are used for the information that is basically disinformation to, um, to come to us, to to come to us, you know, so, Mm -hmm. um, and it's right in your face. Well, then, Dan, Dan, tell me another lie. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me one more lie. Let's see. What can we create this? Hey, there's your sound bite. Kevin, he usually makes me sing, so that's good. Wait, 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 Dan, if you're going to, whoa, whoa, Dan, if you're going to sing, do it when I'm ready to hear it. Go ahead. Give me another Fleetwood Mac, or is it, well, that is Fleetwood Mac, right? Or was that? Christine McVie on her solo. I can't remember it anyways. Sweet little lies. Anyways. Dan, you know what? We've had him on the show for for an hour, and we, we've mm-hmm. yet to hit 2001, which is kind of like Dan's thing. So, mm-hmm. Dan, i got to give one more. i got to deviate one more topic before we get to 2001. And this one is another mind-blowing moment. Actually, really, where the media had a flippant opportunity to blow something totally, uh, make it a big freaking deal. The Phoenix Lights, 1997, when this hu- thousands of people acknowledged this huge object a uh, mile-long boomerang object hovering across the Phoenix, Arizona skies. And when the media jumped on it, they're showing what were legitimately flares that were dropped by the Air Force, you know, a few hours after the fact. Not, mm-hmm. I mean, they're showing, yeah, what, you, what we're seeing are the actual flares, but that's not what the witnesses were talking about. The flares are just, they're static. They're right there in the air, falling, you know, at a vertical descent. What people were witnessing was a, a flyby, a low-flying, non-sounding machine that the, gover- the governor later acknowledged that he did see, which he kind of blew off at the beginning. But again, well, he that's didn't just exact- blow it off. He made it into a total joke and brought out right. the right. the, the alien, alien whatever on his buddy, yeah. yeah, the yeah. big headed alien, and they're just like, oh, ha ha ha, guess it's but the alien. Is it, it help? Because I think that's going to be a nice little segue between from there, from that story to t- 2001, and how the media is either being controlled, manipulated, or they just think it's a joke, Dan? Well, you know, they had anti-gravity back in 1955. You know, Otis Carr, you know, with protege of Nikola Tesla, you know, developed right, anti-gravity, right. but the FBI came in and, you know, <laughs> shut that down. They want, to, they want to keep us retarded while they have the super advanced. So, yeah, they're, I, you know, almost as though... They don't do something like that unless they know what they're doing, you know, not unless they had some kind of strange malfunction that caused them to fly over Phoenix. You know, I kind of doubt it. But, you know, it almost feels to me like they were testing the water, testing to see uh, how many people were pick up, you know, just like um, like you were mentioning about the X-Files in my struggle where they did a complete disclosure in an episode, but they did it as a science fiction movie. And so, see, there's a confusion. It's another psyop situation. Or, oh, you're telling truth, but it's a science fiction. <clears throat> you know. Um, well, how that led up to 2001, you actually have to go back before 97, go back to 93. What, what happened? I can give you a brief of how, how 2001 disclosure happened uh, mm-hmm. in the first place. Uh, what happened is, unlike the other Rockefellers, Lawrence Rockefeller wanted to have disclosure. And so the disclosure initiative, 
uh, was pushed during the Clinton administration. Clinton administration uh, had his CIA director, James Woolsey, try to look into the matter. Guess what? The head of the CIA is the being denied access. And all this happened ever since uh, uh, Nelson Rockefeller restructured during the Eisenhower administration the CIA MJ-12 operations for plausible deniability for Eisenhower. And what happened, he totally lost control. And, you know, since they murdered Kennedy, uh, is disclosed in the, um, the burn memo out of uh, Jesus Angleton, James Jesus Angleton's uh, counterintelligence files that were snatched showing that they, uh, he, he was trying to release the information, but uh, they shut it down. Um, so what happened was, uh, unlike what uh, ex-president uh, Clinton said uh, on Jimmy Kimmel, oh yeah, I tried to send some of my aides down there to Area 51. There was no uh, aliens down there and, and all this stuff. Well, no, that's not really what happened. He sent a CIA right. director. His CIA director was denied access. They gained together a meeting. Uh, Dr. Greer wrote some paper that one of the scientists involved with the group was impressed by about um, how higher dimensional spacecraft travels and all this. So they brought... Uh, Greer in with the CIA director into a private meeting. He brought a, a huge stack of papers and documents, and the CIA director said, I know the subject's real. I'm just trying to figure out why the hell I can't gain access to it. And, mm -hmm. you know, he found out that the head of Joint Chiefs of Intelligence is denied access. Two presidential administrations, we have proof, has been denied access. And so here we have our legal government being denied access. And so Dr. Greer met with military advisors. So from 93 to the year 2000, when I came on board, that was a 100th videotape witness testimony. Um, right. They gathered, you know, 450 witnesses. You know, that was well over 500. Um, and so, you know, he had his life threatened not to go to the National Press Club. And when we did go in the press club, the first hour, hour and a half, was jammed by the NSA. They had about half of... I don't know how many people, like at least a half a million, logged on to see the see the event. And it was jammed, but you know, we hit the uh, the mainstream media effectively sanitized it from the populace. But the alternative media, you know, I've seen my testimony in like six different languages, so it you know it it <laughs> went out all over, all over the alternative media, um, and that's how the disclosure project came into being. In fact, uh, Sarah McClendon, who was the White House correspondent. She sponsored the event, the sweet little lady. Um, and she was asking uh, President Clinton, you know, well, what are you gonna, when are you going to do disclosure? And she, he said back to her, well, Sarah, I, there's a government, a secret government within the government, and I don't control it, quote unquote. So um, that pretty much says it all. Do you feel that maybe the presidents aren't around long enough to make a damn difference? So why clue them in? Oh, absolutely. So okay, wait a minute. So wait a minute. People... You're, are you saying that eight years is not? Oh um, hell no! Not not no? enough to make a difference when they've already been keeping it secret for sixty or seventy years. See, what is eight I, years? I just, or four I, years? You know what? There's a there's a sick part of me, and I'm not. I, I'm an independent. He's not the end but, all be all. Yeah, I mean, but there's a part a, of me a, that it's a person that's right. the head I, of the, I, the 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 public view the for pub, a certain exactly. number of years. Now, exactly, and there is a sick part of me that wants to see Trump take office and be the one that just says "fuck it." I am going to. Oh my god. Yeah, I am going to. Uh, Get it out I'd open. rather see Giorgio Tsoukalos, actually, or, I don't know, maybe Richard Dolan. Well, I mean, Mark those Hayes. guys are right there with – yeah, but, I mean, those guys have been in front of uh, – well, Dolan and, and – well, and Dan, yes. too. I mean, have been in front of senators and stuff, and it's like – well, I mean, yeah, I mean, and I want to get to that 2013 thing, but let's, you know, Dan, I think there's a with, lot of other people that are well keyed, well versed in this yeah. that are being that are trying to get their word out, but I think they're being they're being 
uh, smashed. You know, you're just either your your testimony's wrong, your character's wrong, your personality's wrong, your information's wrong. I think there's so many ways of manipulating these characters, and I'm I'm using you, Dan, as a character as well. And I don't want to minimize your your part in this at no, all. No, char- character uh, assault. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I had something to say about Hillary and Trump. Uh, you know, it's just kind of <laughs> interesting that uh, Newt Greenwich, that's the right way to pronounce his name, um, you know, he said on, on mainstream media, on Fox, you know, they don't want Trump in because, quote, he hasn't been initiated. He's not a member of the secret society. Yeah, he's not part of the club. Yeah, he's yeah. not part of the club. And it's kind of interesting when uh, Kennedy just before he was murdered, he was warning of the dangers of secret and secret societies. And, you know, the Warren Commission, that's, you know, the lone gunman theory, uh, the mm-hmm. conspiracy theory of the lone gunman. <laughs> you know, here you have uh, Earl Warren uh, of the commission, 33rd degree Freemason, uh, LBJ, yeah. 33rd degree Freemason, Alan Dulles, who had it at 33rd degree Freemason, future president Gerald Ford, who tried to say the bullet came in from another direction, 33rd degree Freemason. And here he's warning about the dangers of secret society. And, you know, the 33rd degree is not an honorary degree. You can't do anything to get to the 30s. You can go to the 32nd, but you have to be selected to go to the 33rd degree. My grandfather was 33rd, and his father was a 32nd. And, you know, Hillary... Hillary was all in on the whole um, uh, Lawrence and uh, Rockefeller initiative where, you know, there's a picture of her walking with Lawrence and she's holding a book about the implications of extraterrestrial life. And, you know, ever since they lost control, uh, 1954 is when they started the Bilderberg meetings headed by um, uh, Prince Bernhard, former SS Nazi officer, and and Hillary's been you know uh, invited. She was uh, to the Bilderberg meetings in the past. So yeah, you so know. Do you feel that uh, maybe she might be the leading contender when it comes to who knows? It's kind of coincidental, though. You know, you have to look. You have to take everything into account. You know. So here you got one guy who's up. He's not a member. Here's another person. Well, apparently uh, she's okay. You know. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, I don't like Prince said. I don't have a dog in that race. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is about time where um, we start, you know, thinking about that race. And, and, and the reality is, and I want to know. On and I, this is one of my bucket list items. Before I take my last breath, I want to know the flipping truth. I want to not just, no, wait, I'll take it back. I don't want to just know it. I want to experience it because I know what I know. And I believe Kevin, what I believe. Kevin, come to my house. Kevin, just come to my house. I'll let my husband know that you're going to stop by. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just we'll just take care of this and just nip it in the bud. Well, I mean, no, but I, I don't just want it to be me. I want it to be, you know, you know, unless you want to invite the whole city over, Tiffany. I want the whole planet i mean i want it full disclosure and dan this is a good, tell a me good, yeah you know what dan? this is a good point to discuss the the ce5 movement actually oh there okay well jump in because Stephen greer was involved with this whole close encounters of the fifth kind the human initiated contact what do you what do you think about that dan well, you know, like I said, back in, uh, it was like 1976, I had a CE5 where, you know, I felt they initiated contact with me, and I reached my hand out, and, and a ship came down, mm-hmm. uh, you know, far away, but it was, you know, bobbing up and down as in, yes, you know, <laughs> um, when I asked, you know, is there somebody out there, and I called you know, my girlfriend I was going out with at the time and said, you see what I'm seeing? And, and she started freaking out a bit. But um, so, you know, if they sense fear, they don't come any closer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in agreement with my friend Clifford Stone um, that, you know, the vast majority of the extraterrestrial races are not hostile. They are uh, benevolent. And you think about, you know, I don't know about all of them. I know Dr. Gribbley's all of them are 
are not hostile. I, I don't I don't really know personally, but it would seem that uh, if they were anything like Hollywood portrays, you know, we'd be we would have been decimated, we'd be smoking ash a long right. time ago. You exactly. Know? That's so, my whole point. Why Why would they? Yes, there's the possibility that some of them are um, negative or or have ulterior motives. But when it comes down to it, why wouldn't they just be stomping us all over the place? Yeah, my hope is that uh you know it appears that, you know we're we're so in kindergarten level of understanding who we are in our place in the universe the 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 powers that we have of consciousness within each of us which they took out of all the universities back in 1957 you know because they were afraid people would start becoming aware of the powers of consciousness within each of us um, there is much indication that there is a co-creative collective consciousness that, you know, that's the only reason I do these shows, um, Kevin and T- Tiffany, because I feel like, um, you know, when we're expressing about this, when we're talking, we're ha- asking questions, we're discussing this, you know, it, it propagates, it propagates across the collective, uh, consciousness and 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 the listeners that are listening too um you know don't don't believe anything anybody says you know anybody could be a disinformation agent including myself who knows you know Mm -hmm. um do your own research what what makes sense what what i use as a rock solid foundation is all the witness testimonies and all the documents you know because anybody could like pull anything out of thin air and, and claim oh yeah i've been contacted by these alien races and they say such and such and everything you know uh, so you know i just kind of stay kind of skeptical in in a healthy way uh that lets information kind of unfold and just like the secret space program whistleblowers what we got three guys we got uh Michael Ralph, we've got uh, Randy Kramer, Corey Good coming out, you know, besides uh, William Tompkins, all saying they were taken in a 20-year uh, service duty, you know, on Mars and so forth, and then time jumped back to the age when they were a teenager and then living their normal life and they're starting to have total recall of their military service in a secret space program. Uh, all three of them have the same sort of testimony all but all working in different facets all of them kind of agree on certain elements but you know still you know um they could be uh part of the perception management you don't know but there's much indication like you know after the 2001 press club it inspired you know the uk hacker gary mckinnon who hacked into the space command that found a list of non-terrestrial officers and all these ships that are not on any navy uh uh roster that you know like the USSS hill and cotter and curtis lee may and things that are not in the navy on the oceans of the United uh, of of the planet, but rather uh, a good indication that their secret space program, uh, uh, you know, maybe like aircraft carriers for anti gravity craft. Uh, you know, of course they would do this, uh, but I think there's a lot of people that are, you know, in our military. In fact, the Navy is given the go ahead. Um, to uh, William Tompkins and also the Marine commander of was Randy Kramer to let it all out. Just uh, let the information uh, come out. In fact, uh, there's some indications that, you know, even though Dr. Greer had his life threatened, none of the witnesses that testified in 2001 have had any repercussions or, or threats happen to any of us since that time because we have some people that are, uh, I guess you'd call them white hats. You know, it, it seems like there's a, there's an infiltration, but there's people who know and who are still in the belief of the Constitution of the United States and, and the belief of uh, are loyal to, to those values. And there's other people who meet a certain psychological profile that can work as an asset for this infiltrated cabal. So you have like people within our intelligence community and NASA and 
the military and, and different elements that some are um, um, some are aware, but you know they're in positions like some of these scientists in the Black Projects that they can't. They're monitored so closely they can't unless they get a. What we're trying to do is seek a congressional hearing to release them from their national security oaths so they can come forward and show this the technology that's been hidden for over you know seventy years now. Um, mm-hmm. For the rest of the rest of the world, the, the end, uh, you know, to end this lie. You know, I, I think most people out there hate to being lied to. Yeah, um, you know, my 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 philosophy has always been, Dan, you don't lie to your friends, you lie to girls. Right. But that's a whole different. Angle, I'm going, but um, no, you don't do that either. <laughs> okay, that's why he's hey, divorced. That's, that's, <laughs> hey, well, uh, I'm, we've been happily divorced, but anyways. Hey, since we're, I, since now, we're on the moral ground here. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to ask Dan if I can throw this question at you because actually this is I'm I'm being serious. Now. Of those 500 witnesses, including yourself, have any of those? witnesses any of those people who came forth and told their stories have there been any un you know suspicious happenings with any of of you guys nothing's happened to any of the nothing's happened to any of the witnesses that went to the national press club from that okay. point on from 2001 um there's people on the inside that want this to come out um right Except, you know, it's all a matter of, you know, is the cabal going to come out with it and put their little spin on it? So, Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we've got to unite against this alien, evil alien foe, just like an Independence Day, and and join our militaries together in a one world order, you know, that would uh, fight this fight this evil from from space, you know, as they... So we're back to (laughs) Independence Day, too. Yeah, you know, so... (laughs) Uh, yeah, there's that, that type of disclosure, which we don't want. That's why it's important that people educate themselves and understand. Um, y- you have to really go back through history. You know, it wasn't, you know, I was so naive when I went to uh, the National Press Club. I mean, I thought I was going to be part of this world-changing event. You know, I became aware of all the witness testimonies mm-hmm. and friends with a lot of the witnesses, but... You know, after I saw firsthand and, you know, meeting with senators and congresspeople on Capitol Hill and giving them a 500-page briefing document and a four-hour video and meeting with people in the Pentagon, um, you know, I thought, my God, this is going to change everything. But no, wrong. (laughs) They control the mainstream media. Therefore, they control the perception. They manage the perception. So, um but the alternative media, I think, is one thing that um, that they're very afraid of because of the amount of information that's that's getting disclosed. But it also gives them a tool to gather information on everybody, and it also gives them a tool for perception management to muddy the waters with uh, you know who many how many sites the CIA controls. Who knows? But you know. All of the, if you look at all the Snowden docs, all the different psychological methods of discrediting people and gathering information and sharing and um, all this, uh, this huge amounts of effort in order to maintain the lie. Um, right. You know, I, I think truth sort has of gotten out of their hands, hasn't it, in a way? Uh, truth has this uncanny ability to keep resurfacing. Mm-hmm. and uh, resonating in people. And no matter how, you know, it's like whack-a-mole, you know, as soon as uh, another thing, they try to try to cover it, but it, it, it keeps coming up, you know. And I don't think uh, partial disclosure with a spin on it's going to work, you know, not unless they can completely control the Internet and the, and the perception. Where, but, you know, so many people... You know, only the NSA knows for sure, you know, how many people have have caught on to the uh, perception matrix they've created and how many people mm-hmm. are just, you know, completely clueless, you know, of what's going on. And it's not their fault. We've been generationally indoctrinated falsely. You know, um, a 
few years ago, a group of people led by one individual became a, I don't know if heroes the right one. I took a passion to follow him and his group because I felt like, uh, and Dan, I'm testing you to see if you can name this person and the group. Um, cause I took a, a really interest in the fact that this person and his group of people were starting to disclose information that quote unquote, the government didn't want us to know. And I have been hell bent on waiting for Mr. Assange and his group to spit out the truth about, you know, extra, extraterrestrial life. What's your take on Wikipedia or Wikipedia, Wiki, WikiLeaks? WikiLeaks, yeah. yeah. Well, WikiLeaks is a great resource for people to um, look outside of what the mainstream media is, is wanting us to believe and give our consent to, um, you know, because, you know, there's no real money motivation with all this it, it, right. it's really wanting to bring the truth out out to people in, in situations um you know according to um you know uh cory good one of the uh, secret space program i don't know if this is real or not i'm still watching this one but supposedly a huge through wikileaks is going to a big dump is going to be happening that's so large that there's no way the mainstream media is going to be able to put a spin on this one. It's just going to be right. too, um, as if there isn't enough information already to uh, mm -hmm. convince people. But, you know, like I was saying, in 2001, I was completely naive. And it wasn't until 2014 that a company out of Hollywood, a uh, media company, being a, a witness and an ex-ABC newsman, they wanted me to write an article on media control. You know, and after... Having a number of first-hand experiences where the media effectively sanitized, I said, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to write an article, because I didn't know. Uh, and so what I recommend to anybody, if you want to learn something, put together a chronology for just the 20th and 21st centuries and look at all of the information that's been effectively hidden you know there's a lot of good researchers you know like richard dolan you have jim mars you have joseph professor farrell you've got um um dr michael sal who was inspired by the the press club that happened in 2001 there's a lot of good researchers that have put together a lot of information and they collaborate with each other and they collaborate with documents and and so I wrote this article, and I, I put it up. I, I made it, did it in a Word document for them, and then I decided, well, you know, this thing just keeps expanding. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the web. So I, I anybody wants to look at it, it's at thewebmatrix.net, N-E-T, um, and it's basically a chronology. And when I started putting it together, it's like I was saying, you know, oh my God. <laughs> and it, you know, you start looking at everything and the connections and the documents and the leaks, and you start connecting the dots together. Um, it starts to paint a pretty cohesive picture of of an infiltration and and a control of a matrix of perception that we've been living in. It's almost like the Truman Show, you know, um, that we've been in this bubble of reality where they control the education, they control the mainstream media and the news, they control the entertainment. Um, and it creates this, uh, it creates this agreed upon reality that's based on a lie, e even, even fitting into getting into science and religion. I won't go and touch the religion part, but you know, it, it gets into, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it gets into, you know, all these different areas that creates this matrix of perception that is, uh, you know, keeps the world trapped in this lie. Yes. I am Dan, for the record, I could talk. Religion is my next favorite guilty pleasure topic, though I'm, you know, talking at it more than about it. So just saying, <sighs> man. We have uh, 
It's 11.35 on the East Coast. So that means it's 8.35. Is the sun even down where you're at, Dan? Oh, no. The sun's out bright and shiny over here on the West Coast. Okay. But are you yeah. up for another uh, 20-some minutes? Uh, Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I want to throw at you real quick, if you don't mind me saying, um, your wife um, was chatting with us uh, through our social media, and she just seems like a lovely lady. So a shout out to her for the support that she was showing for the show tonight. And uh, um, looks We're like glad you that got, we can you, steal you away from her for a while. Exactly, yeah. Oh, Rebecca's been so supportive. You know, I, I, um, <laughs> you know, after we did the, uh, she saw me on CNN, you know, and it, before we, we got together actually. And, uh, and so we were heading down the motorhome to Arizona. In the middle of the night, um, I got up out of the bed like, uh, you know, I said, uh, I think the prof- I just woke up and said, the professor needs my help. And for some reason, she was thinking of Gilligan's Island. I don't know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but what was happening was uh, 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 Professor Loiter working with uh, Dr. Greer, they had this energy scientist. And, you know, Professor Loiter is a, an oceanographer, and I have an extensive mm-hmm. electronics background. And so uh, I called, and they flew Rebecca and I. And we stayed for months meeting with these scientists and inventors and uh Oh man, uh, I could tell you so many stories, but yeah, we um, we actually got engaged uh, flying to meet this uh, in our friend's helicopter up in Sedona, uh, meeting this, this energy device, um, and then um, you know it's been uh, God, you know, uh, we, you know we live off grid on top of this mountain and you know, grow our own food and generate our own power and everything like that. And we just really? love living, wow. you know, off lifestyle self-sufficiently. Uh, so is that, yeah. I'm sorry, is, is that the way night. Rebecca thought she was going to live with you after seeing you on CNN? Uh, you know, I, I figured if any, with all the things, <laughs> all the, you know, threats and, and, you know, all the craziness that happened, and I won't go into some of the craziest, but it was very, very intense. I figured any woman that could um, handle that, God, you know, it's like um, she's got to be a life partner. So Yeah, she's a trooper. Yeah. So, so are well, you saying, Dan, it, was she like one of your first groupies from in, from 2001? I don't okay. know. About, she wasn't a groupie. She didn't even know anything about all this stuff, you know. Uh, she was like so open she was, to us. She was enamored by everything about you without knowledge of you, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, I didn't okay. really know a whole lot back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you no, did. I, That's just it. Just you did a, know a lot. A good president. Yeah, you did know a lot back then. It's just that, you know, people were turning a deaf ear on it. So, anyways. <laughs> Jump in, Tiff. Uh, it's powerful the connection between a man and a woman when you're in, you're in sync with it. It's amazing uh, creative power to to affect the universe. I think it's my belief. Yeah. I give Tiffany all the power on our Friday night show. So, Tiffany, with that, please continue. <laughs> well, I just uh, <laughs> it just sort of takes me back when people talk about their significant others on the show being supportive because mine would rather this whole topic just disappear like poof into you know God's great big black blue space. But um, I really do feel that it's important to share this knowledge with everyone and anyone you can. To to an extent, I mean, when it comes down to discussing um, secrets, you know, you you can only educate people so far, and at mm-hmm. some point they're looking at you like, is she crazy? Has she lost her marbles? Should we be maybe not talking to this person? Or you know, you you sort of you sort of have that that pop culture and the media pushing down your throat that it's not real, it's not real, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. 
And then when when people actually do have experiences, I feel that they are um, sort of hung out to dry and, you know, maybe even start questioning their own sanity. And it's got to be a very strange situation to be so involved with this world as you are. Yeah, and also yeah. be in this world of of intelligence. I mean, it's what you were what you were expressing is something that we could only, as laymen um, and civilians, hope and dream either are, is happening or not happening based on your own preference. Mm, good call. Well, you know, you bring up an excellent. Point, Tiffany. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing a future show in August with uh, my friend Jill Hansen, and we're going I to be love focusing. Jill. We love Jill. Oh, she's she's awesome. She is. Um, she's way above my head when it comes to like metaphysics and everything else. I just, but I love her knowledge. I love her brain. We're going to be talking about the psychological keys of transition to take the like the average Joe on the street who hasn't a clue uh, about what's going on and how to, how to, you got, it's a delicate situation trying to bring somebody into, into awareness of the perception matrix they've been born and indoctrinated into. Um, I'm curious from both of, both of you, Kevin and Tiffany, what, how, how do you approach, or you run into somebody who, hasn't a clue about all this, but you want to start a conversation. How do you, it's, uh, well, it's, it's how funny do you, you say that? that. It's funny you ask that. And Tiffany, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use our one common denominator. It's not so much okay. that he doesn't have a clue. He's just very, <laughs> he's a cynic to it. And, and, and you can, I'm going to, I'll just, you know, with our show, Friday nights we do our paranormal thing, but I also have a Monday, Wednesday night podcast show. And Monday nights is very eclectic where my co-host is an atheist. He is just a a non-believer. You know, he kind of honestly kind of laughs at what we're doing on Friday nights. Oh, admit it. He thinks it's hilarious and ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So So, (laughs) with that said, all right, take that. So how do you in in not there you go Dan instead of someone who is like who doesn't have a thought either way how do you go about the other extreme how do you handle that Oh you're going to shoot it back to me yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> Um it's you know I I'm still trying to figure this one out myself in fact I'm going to be giving it a lot of thought before the show with Jill uh so we can kind of talk to it but you know uh, you know to be perfectly on all you can do is relate from your own experience right so uh, you know when you know this is 1969 that was what 40 some years ago 47 years or something like that ago mm-hmm. uh, where I got this report about an extraterrestrial craft coming out of the ocean and it kind of left a it left a seed that left unanswered question. I know the chief of naval operations is aware of something very unusual. It wasn't a weather balloon that was glowing orange that shot out of the ocean and it's tracked on radar. You know, so that little seed left a. And then even in 2001, when I was going to the National Press Club, I was still having a hard time wrapping my head around how this whole thing is being controlled with the media and how our government has been uh, effectively, um, uh, you know, infiltrated, I guess is the best word. Um, it, it, it was difficult because of years and years of decades of programming and trusting, you know, Walter Cronkite on the, on the news, you know, back in the 50s and 60s. And then we have, you know, much more refined and polished today where what there was like um, 50 corporations in 1983. Now there's like five that control everything you see and hear. They can totally consolidate mm-hmm. it, their um, information. Um, how how to take the average guy on the street? You know, you, you have to. You have to yeah, speak person, to their level. You have exactly, Tiffany, and you have to. You have to start speak. out very gently and and explain just the basics, and then you go step by step 
You know, you lay your foundation, and that's what I, I appreciate about uh, appreciate about you is that you have done your homework in regards to you know what has happened in the in the past you know sixty years, seventy years, and gone further and 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 presented your own personal information to the world. And I I I can't thank you enough. I mean, really, it's it's. It has to be one of the bravest things that anyone could do is is to really come forward and and be the living testament to what is really going on. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think anybody likes being lied to, you know, and especially when you think about what the you know in the fifties and sixties you were thinking, oh, the year two thousand and twenty first century, you know, we'd be all in our little anti gravity cars and everybody would have, you know, plenty of wonderful, the, you know, organic food being grown. We'd be able to go the to jet other planets. Thing. We'd be uh, real life jets. Yeah, like like the the real life Jetsons with uh, technology that's working in harmony with nature and and civilizations would be, you know, advanced and medicine and, and our longevity and everything would be enhanced. Uh, but no, no, we've got uh, infiltrated and kept in a retarded state, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, yeah, I just feel it's my, my duty, you know, to I've been given a very extremely small fragment piece of one piece of over 500 for, you know, the whistleblowers uh, that you know, I just, it, it's my moral obligation to uh, expose the truth. Um, you know, and you, you just can't come up to somebody and say, well, you know, uh, we didn't win the war with the Nazis, they joined with the reptilians, and but it's okay, we're trying to catch up with the Nordic aliens, or working with the Navy, and we're, uh, and they, they've hijacked our uh, our planet, and they're doing their own civilization underground and on Mars and everything like that. You just can't throw that at somebody and say, "Yeah, right, Looney Tune." Um, you know, <laughs> you've got to come at it incrementally and feed it little bit by little bit. And I'm still looking at, you know, the National Press Club with the witnesses. It's easy for me because I can say I was involved as one of the witnesses that was there. And, uh, by the way, did you know that, uh, you know, in 2001, before the 9-11 event, you know, this was disclosed, um, it's one way, you know, the disclosure project did, uh, bring a lot, but after 9-11, everything went off the radar and the citizen hearing by Stephen Bassett, who invited Rebecca and I to be there, but unfortunately I had a situation I I couldn't attend, but there was, you know, some good testimonies given there to ex-members of Congress. And, of course, what happened uh, uh, just before that was the Boston uh, Marathon, and that kind of took everything off the radar there as well, Uh, bombing, rather. Uh, So it deserves thought it deserves contemplation how to reach people who and it's not their fault uh it's not that they're clueless it's it's a matter of they've been falsely indoctrinated um Mm -hmm. and how to how to bridge that gap of uh of the hidden reality that they are yet to become aware of you know that that is the 64 million dollar question that uh you know, there's a lot of people that are, you know, they go to the UFO conferences, they read all the books, they listen to talk shows like this. It's kind of almost like preaching to the choir, right? But um, the so many people are out there that are just trying to survive, and, or some people are surviving really well, and they've got what they want in the material world, and they don't care about anything else. Um, you know, there's different different reasons why people uh, you know they they've been taught that you know ever since 1967 they started the CIA started the term conspiracy theorists you know and they give that label and the tin foil hats like in the uh, in the movie signs were Dying. you know all these beautiful set <laughs> beautiful crop circles that they do, you know, and the movie says it's as if they, not as if they didn't warn us, you know, they have this this evil alien with this farmer, played by Mel Gibson, 
you know, I don't know how many farmers don't have shotguns, but, you know, it <laughs> makes this uh, crazy movie. But they do have it, baseball bats. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, come on, you know. Uh, but the whole idea is to to associate, you know, um, the religion with uh, the evil alien and mark them as like demonic creatures that are uh, they are coming here. Uh, you know, so you know, you know the role. Uh, yes, so it's it's decades of indoctrination that we're dealing with. Uh, mm-hmm. to overcome this. Gotcha. You know, I'd like to think we touched on the agenda, our topic of discussion with you. I think we kind of did, but we we did go deep. We went different years, different places, different thoughts. We brought up presidents. We brought up Trump, Clinton, Julian Assange, the media. You know what I would have wished tonight, Tiffany? I would have wished we would have mm-hmm. somehow, some way, had access to Anderson Cooper and just had him t- tied here and just made him listen to the whole thing. <laughs> the Silver Fox. He's going to do You know, come- I, I love him. I really do. I appreciate I him too. because – um, when I was in high school, we watched him on Channel One. I don't know if y'all remember him being on that. It was, I mean, he was fresh out of school. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's one of those mainstream media characters, but he's also a Vanderbilt. You know, you sort of wonder if there was maybe some kind of um, preordained position for him in the in the media. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um. As we're, uh, Dan, rounding third and heading for home on the show, we like to throw at you what we call our round of shots. Of course, it's a takeoff on the name shooting from the lip. But what this is is a quick, kind of a quick Q&A thing where we just throw some quick questions at you just to get to know the person a little better. It's not going to get you on any uh, – watchdog lists or anything like that you've probably already done that yourself through your you know your discussion at this with... point i'm not concerned but <laughs> yeah. Say, away. yeah exactly <laughs> all right uh, my first question to you name the first concert you attended <laughs> uh it was the who. <laughs> the who the who yeah oh awesome <laughs> do you remember the date school. Yeah, it was uh, 1967. 67, that's what I was going to say. Daltrey and Peter, uh, what was that? What's his name? Peter, help me out here. Anyway. Oh, God, I forgot, you know. You know, I know. That was right when I was getting out of high Uh, school. (laughs) Yeah. Um, All right, Tiffany, you ask the next question. Okay. Um. How about okay? This sort of relates, though. I don't. I didn't really. I didn't study, sir. Um, so no question is a bad question. But what is the most absurd question that you've ever been asked on this topic? Ah, uh, uh, I think it was one radio talk show host that said, um, "I, you know." I bet we could discredit every one of these uh, witnesses, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know, 500, what is it? Yeah. Discredit all the admirals, generals, astronauts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All of the top. That, yeah. That's, let's just that's do pretty that. pretty absurd. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Kevin. Interesting. Uh, who knows who payroll he was on, you know, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last picture you took with your phone um, and, if, and if it was something yeah, to do with Rebecca be honest <laughs> <laughs> oh we've been taking pictures of our, our garden we've been uh, okay. working diligently Rebecca especially uh, we have a large garden and uh, we just have a lot of pride in seeing our, our little babies growing Okay, I've got another one, Kevin. Go. So, Dan, 
cats or dogs? Ugh. Uh, Tiffany, say again. Cats or dogs? I'm not. I'm not getting that. <laughs> do you prefer cats or do you prefer dogs on your on your your separate little space up off the grid? Do you prefer oh, uh, dogs or cats? Oh, oh, well, we got two cats. I guess uh, Rebecca loves dogs too. I love dogs also, um, but you know, we got two cats. So okay, there's a second part to that question. So if you have dogs and you have cats, which ones <laughs> identify weird things better? Which ones identify any kind of um, strange visitors in the night that you may have better? Did you know that the cat uh, neural connectors uh, are like more than twice that of a dog? Uh, Is that so, why they ignore you when you call? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, I'm not in for that today. That's that's not what I'm interested in. Now this mouse over here. <laughs> that's very interesting. I did not know that. Well, you know, dogs more likely bark, but uh, you know, um, the cats act you get a little squirrely if there's weird energy going on. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, okay. Uh, what's the yeah, one? I answer that. <laughs> what's the one superpower that you would like to have? Um, uh, to expose all deception on the entire planet. <laughs> and uh, and you would be a uh, very hated man trans- at that point. Transform it. <laughs> oh. Well. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you'd be very popular, though. There's a lot of people that don't want that to happen. Oh, no, no. I'd, I'd be... Uh, no, no, they wouldn't like me. Yeah, at least you some people would love me. Some people would hate me, but it all depends on which side you're on. What about you, Tiffany? Next question. Um, hmm. How about what is... What what was your favorite vacation and why? Have you ever taken a vacation? That's probably <laughs> very, very. <laughs> Do you ever have few. time for vacation? Okay. Um, not as many as we would like to. Um, uh, I think uh, you know Rebecca and I when we are uh, going up and down the California coast, uh, we're coming back home uh, in a motorhome. Our, we have this round Airstream motorhome and. Which I was hoping on putting an energy device in when I came back, but uh, um, uh, that those plans changed. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very cool, actually. Mm-hmm. We've done a lot of RVing in our history, so yeah, that's always fun. Take the long road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take the long road home. That's right. What's the what's your favorite? Do you have any more for you, app? Kevin? Yeah, what's your favorite app on your phone? Uh, the one that says power off. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, brother. Well, I I really appreciate the time that you've given us tonight, Dan, and I Honestly. Oh, we're done already? We're not oh, man, are you kidding me? I've got two babies. <laughs> I've got to get up at 6 in the morning, and it I, is midnight. So. <laughs> but, you know, thank you for hanging us, hanging with us tonight on Shooting from the Lip. And uh, for our listeners, please join us again next week. Um, we're going to have another paranormal episode on Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time as we shoot the shift in all things paranormal with our guest, Annie Wilder. And that'll be July 1st. She's an author discussing ghost stories and monsters. So don't forget to like and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, And we really thank you for listening. So we're your host, Tiffany Mack, Kevin Hale, wishing you good night and letting you know that you should probably sleep with one eye open because you never know who is going to be visiting in the middle of the night. Right, Dan? 
<laughs> I, I agree. I just want to say the webmatrix.net is the web. I don't sell anything. and um, I really enjoyed the show with both of you and hope to do it again sometime. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We really appreciate there, it. Yep. I, we have to get him back on, Tiffany, because there was uh, several rocks. That I would love to not, get him on yeah. with, with Jill. Let's get him and Jill, Jill together yeah. to like, maybe, educate us. Yeah, and then maybe for 15 minutes, Russ. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> 15 minutes out of a two-hour show. I think We, we, we make a lot of en- enemies yeah. that way. <laughs> no, but Dan, okay. you, you did. Dan, you came on. You killed it. It was so fun. It was just great being able to talk through, you know, just take us through the steps, through the timing of all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I applaud you. I appreciate the, all the stuff that you've been able to do and, and the fact that you have a real good understanding on what, you know, what the media is doing or not doing for us. And, you know, and it's how, good to pick how, the brain of somebody who's actually been there and done that. You know, it's, right. mm-hmm. it's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, something that we don't always get to do in the generalized uh, civilian population. Right. So Thank you nice both for you. being a voice in the alternative media that mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, allowing, you know, people like myself and many others to, um, you know, start looking at this life that we're living and uh, how we can, how we can make it better, you know, through mm-hmm. transformation, and mm-hmm. expose, uh, expose the things that, you know, that we need in order to evolve. And I that's agree. it. It's it's about yes. evolution in, as a human collaborative. You know, it's it's a collective. It's not one person or one group or you know, we 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 are all going to have to face this in the end. Um and it really just matters how how open your mind is and how willing you are to change or adapt. So Mm-hmm. Good good note to end the show on. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Very good. Dan, you were incredible. You came on and just absolutely killed it. I appreciate you hanging with us tonight. I do think uh, be prepared for our Tiffany and I to reach out to you in the near future because I do think there's a there's more for us to talk about. And uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so, so look forward. Yes. Again, thanks so much, Dan. And give a give a shout out to Rebecca for uh, the nice words and the the. Uh... She's listening. <laughs> All right, Rebecca. Thank you, babe. Thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> we'll get you on so next sweet. time to hear your your yeah. wifely aspect. Oh, oh, she, oh yeah. she she's she's uh, she's shy that way. She's <laughs> No. Oh well, then that that makes it, that will make it even funner <laughs> for me. So, is but then, a word? huh? <laughs> it's funner a word? word? It it's not, but just let it be for today. It is today, okay. Yeah, it is today. <laughs> Dan Willis, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we will connect with you again, and we'll sit sit around this campfire thing and tell more stories. Is there's still lots to be told, so. Oh yeah, appreciate definitely. it. Yeah, Tiffany, Kevin. Awesome. Bye bye. Good show, yeah. Tiffany. On this yeah, Friday yeah. night, uh, it was deep. Man, there was a lot of, um, lot of. Uh, there was a lot of ways that, or whether it was intended or not because of the timing of things, we were able to kind of branch and go here in different directions with the types of information to stay kind of chronological of importance. But um, I I do think it was needed and he was great. He was absolutely Mm -hmm. great. And uh, so this is arguably one of my best shows to, to have done. So good Mm -hmm. good, kudos to you and, so, yeah, and, uh, I mean, it was a great show. There's a lot of good information, and the the problem is, we almost don't have enough time to. I mean, right. we had we had a few avenues to go down tonight, but in the end, mm-hmm. there are so many more 
Um, and you can tell that he's able to go down mm-hmm. those aisles and go down and navigate those those roads, which um, we need more people like that who are who are able and willing to do I agree. so. So, I mean, he hung totally with us agree. for two hours, and it's awesome. He and did. and he you know, did. you don't always have that. So. And he didn't seem like uh, he didn't seem like it was um, you know an obligation. Uh, yeah, an obligation. There you go. Uh, I think we we were just hitting it off the whole time, and we had good stories to share, and a, uh, it was entertaining. So and uh, mm-hmm. enlightening as well. So yeah. Uh, yeah. What can you tell us about next week's show, dear? Well, like I said, it's Annie Wilder will be um, discussing um, some of the novels that she's written and, and stories. Um, and this is only the – is this the, the third segment that we've done on ghost stories and monsters, I believe? So uh, we've done – I'd like to – we'd like to throw a few – yeah, yeah uh, throw a few of those in there every once in a while and – uh, we've got a lot to look forward to, though. We've got um, remote viewing with Margie Kay and um, yeah. some right. some other. Let's see, what else do we have? We've got a few other things um, coming up. Uh, Grant Cameron, right? And three. Now, keep in Tom mind, and Travis. Keep in mind, mm-hmm. next Friday, Tiffany, you're going to be mm-hmm. a remote. You're going to be, be in remote. another state, yeah. so. That's yep. gonna, we have to test that out and make sure it works for us. So, uh, yep. Yep. But it's going to be uh, – it should be a fun show. I don't yeah. think it might not be a two-hour show, but tonight was every bit. Well, we could just tell. You, yeah. I mean, it was, it was heavy. I mean, Let's it was, just hope the not, wind is down next, set, next yeah. Friday. There you go. If I have yeah. to do it out of my lanai. <laughs> 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 there you go. Find a nice remote viewing. A remote viewing, a remote location. I hear you. Are you going to try to sleep before you leave tomorrow? No. I might as well not. Okay. I think I'm just going to pack the car Uh, and sit and watch the stars. Okay. Yep. All right, my lovely co-host, the very successful uh, night tonight with the KTN Earthly Show, Dan Willis came on and just killed it a lot of good information man we talked mm-hmm. all the way back to the germany um oh he could go on for hours i'm yeah, sure i'm it sure was he germany just... crashed uh oh, re-engineering yeah. during the germany uh regime uh we had the Roswell. Roswell, how how yeah. that could have been re uh re uh re-energize or uh, re-energize is that right re-energize I can't remember. <laughs> it's number eight, Tiffany, and you know what that means. But anyways, <laughs> Tiffany, we we had we did we pulled off a good show tonight. It was a solid show. It was a fun show, and um, it's only going to get better for us. We seem to get our shit together every week, so here we are. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All right, okay. Tiffy, you you go tonight. You go to bed. You want to end our show? Do you have a certain line of information I that we should have? Oh, you did. <laughs> okay. I just said that. <laughs> All right. You Wishing did. you a good night, and letting you know that you should probably sleep with one eye open. <laughs> yeah. And we're wishing you I'm a good night. I'm already dead asleep. Yeah, we're wishing you the the others. We wish you a good night and a pleasant day. How about that? Peace out. That Louisville. sounds good. Peace out. Yeah. That's right. KT and Earthly, and we're out. Out. Later, guys. And no time were any animals or people hurt during this presentation of shooting from the lip.